Hello and welcome back to our Cold Infinity Let's Play Test Poorly. Uh, let's Teach Poorly, or some combination of those two. So, uh, as always, music is by Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. So, last time we had a uh, bit of excitement here as our Morokiri got its left side completely shot off. Now, one thing I have determined based on this test and a couple of other, like, quick abstract runs, the ratio of structure points to other points is probably not good. Probably need to make it stronger. Uh, it needs to be a higher ratio. I need to be able to provide more points in the structure relative to these others, because if you take out all of the structure, on one side of a well you think it takes out everything else uh so it is essentially a weak point right hitting structure is weak point and because of the way the game uh targeting works these lower values will always hit hull because hull conceptually isn't supposed to be as valuable right that's the main thing it's just empty hull but if you shoot enough of it it destroys an entire section so I think what I'll do is I'm going to do an, my next playtest and my next teach uh, poorly uh, series, as it were, is going to maybe try to double these numbers, redo the um, uh, the ratios, the point costs and the weights and so forth, so that I can put twice as much structure points in these sections as I have right now and give that a go and see if that improves things. Uh, but for right now, we're stuck with the Morokiri being absolutely screwed. So we are now at a new turn. Go ahead and allocate some power. So this guy here, he's got 25 points available. He probably doesn't need to worry about any extra points at this point. Could do rapid fire on the pulse auto cannons. Probably a good idea. How much energy does these these take? Two. So we'll do both. And we're going to see that these are getting three shots per turn instead of two. Because of the rapid fire. Normally they have a rate of fire of two. And then, uh, let's see, do we want to do anything else? So the engine here didn't really... Yeah, we can't boost engines and we can't boost sensors by doing that. But you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, here's the thing to note. Um, the cudgel is almost certainly going to be port side only against this thing for the next turn. So we don't really need BCD pulse auto. Right? We don't need this one loaded up. Where is it? Back here. Because that's BCD. So we'll actually not rapid fire that one. That leaves us with nine points available. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the sensors. So that's going to become 13. There. So we'll go with that. And then over here, more Kiri. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy, poor guy. Okay, so we don't have any of these weapons on this side. They're all blown out. Now there is a rule that powered weapons and powered systems that get destroyed maintain their power output for a number of turns equal to their power output. So for example, these two proton bolters that were, were live are still going to push out two and two for the next two turns. Fusion shield doesn't. Flexion shield does. And the fusion net does. So two, four, five, six is still going to be in use for the next turn. And then after that, it'll be four for one more turn. So we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on that. So our available power is still 24 plus 20 because we've been keeping ourselves limited. We have to use two, four, five, six, Seven, and then we'll use seven and eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we've got our eleven. 
All right. Nothing else. What we do have eleven. Now let's. You know what? Actually, let's do this. Let's go ahead and push through a whole bunch of power into the sensors. Because we we need ECM like like nobody's business. Because we no longer have the fusion net. Fusion net's been destroyed. So all of that extra ECM that we were getting is gone. So it's normally eight slash four. Four points gets us one. How many points do we have? We have 44 points. Oh, you know what? The other thing we'll probably want to do is push through the engine as well. Oh, no, no, we can't. Oh, I mean, we can, but it's not a good idea because that'll have, we'll still be forced to overthrust the aft engines and that could damage them. The aft thrusters, I mean. And that could damage them and then this ship would be adrift. So that's not, that's not going to happen. But that does mean we're going to use all that power for the sensors. So 44 minus 11 is 33. So let's do 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. That's going to be six more points. Yeah. So this will bring it up to 14. And it costs us 24. So that's going to be 35. Now remember, we only recharge 12 every turn. So this is going to be a problem for the next turn, but we just, we got to get out of here. We can't do much in the way of um, rot uh, uh, pivoting. We've lost the port thrusters. So we could pivot starboard. But that would turn us, we could put it at the starboard engine, so it would turn us counterclockwise. That'll send us right into the enemy. So we're just gonna have to go. We're just gonna have to go. Go, 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 go. All right. Initiative determination. So 19 minus four, minus two is 17. And add one D6 is 23. Now over here, we're at 19 minus 2, 17 plus 3 is 20. Right, so he's got better initiative, which means that the cudgel is going to go first. Now electronic warfare. All right, so this guy is feeling pretty good about himself. He just nearly destroyed that enemy ship. So what do we got? We've got 13 and 8 on our sensors. We don't really need much of a shroud. Let's see, let's see here. At the end of movement, based on what we anticipate is going to be happening, we're only 5 inches away. And right now we're only 12, uh, you know, 13 inches. So, so that's looking like we're only going to need a 1 or 10 inches which lets us amplify. We're not gonna bother with countermeasures because this guy, we took out all of his, well, we don't know what he's got on this side, but that's on the other side of the ship and he lost that thruster. We're going to anticipate he won't want to turn into the fight, which is in fact what's gonna happen. He's not gonna want to turn into the fight. So we're gonna go ahead and amplify all 12 with no ECM. All right, now for this guy. We no longer have the fusion net. Fusion net is done, done, done. Let's actually go ahead and make it super done. Oh, that's a the wrong. That's the wrong thing. Let's do. We want. We want the right color. We want red. We want nice bright red color. We're gonna X this out. I'm gonna X this out so we know everything is dead. Well. Not this part. There. Okay. Dead, dead, dead. 14. So that's going to be a 1 and 10. And we're we're not shooting. We're not shooting. We're going to we're going to leave that to there. We're going to do 13 points in countermeasures. 
We have defensive fire on the proton bolters, but we don't have the the, the port side po proton bolters anymore. We have the starboard side proton bolters. Okay, uh So they do get the, those that defensive fire with these two. And each one can defend against two shots at minus two. I actually probably should have so, yes, okay, we're actually going to push engine thrusters. We are going to rotate. We're going to keep moving in this direction. We're going to accelerate. Well, we're going to accelerate this way, but we are going to spin to try to get our starboard side out there. That's yeah, also because we don't want to get hit in the core. Yeah, and then we'll be able to use defensive fire. Okay. Countermeasures, all good. Initiative movement. So who's slower? This guy is slower. Got a higher initiative number. So what's he doing? He's moving this way. He's going to be crossing over. Once he gets there, he'll still be port side weapons. And he'll be slewing. Oh, you know, I feel like we just want to leave him where he is, right? I think we just want to keep him going. What's his angle of, uh, his direction of travel? Is 300? Yeah. Yep, yep, and he's moving four, I believe. Yeah, he's moving four. So let's go ahead and move you there. And we're going to move you four out in this direction for, oh, for the next turn. Now, eh, not quite. We don't have to be that precise. It's not, you know, it's not the end of the world. There we go. So that's where he is now. And we're going to leave him. We're not, he's not, he's just going to drift. He's going to drift across here and maybe rotate next turn, pivot to the clockwise try to catch this guy. Uh, all right. Now he needs to push. Oop, gotta remember where, what turn we're on. Let me mark it over here too. All right. So we can do two points of thrust through an engine that does six. Uh, all right, two points of thrust. That'll get us a plus one in our speed. But what, uh, are we just moving straight? I guess we are. We have not, he's not done anything. What he's going to do, though, is he is going to accelerate. Because he has to get, he has to get out of here. He, and he can't really afford to do. Oh, but now, oh, now he's thinking about it. This guy's coming up this way. If he goes... Yeah, he'll pass on the starboard side no matter what. He doesn't even need to, to spin. Okay, alright. So, here's what we're gonna do. Two points. Through the aft. We're gonna push two. Yeah, I should... I should uh, Mention. I should note here that this is dead. I, I, um, I wonder if there's a good way to... Yeah, I mean, I guess we kind of just mark it here. And then we'll mark... Half, half I guess? I don't know. It's a little, weird little paint. Uh, that's funny. That's cool. Okay. Um, we haven't lost our both of those. Have, no, we haven't. Never mind. We've lost one of two, so we're just gonna. I'll just make a little X and an O. Huh? No, I'm not gonna do that. That's awful. We need uh, we need to make these smaller. I can't remember now how to make that. Was it like this? Yeah, there we go. So one is dead. Eh, all right, fine, fine. I'm not an artist, so sue me. There we go. One is fine. One is dead. Okay, pushing two through one of these guys here. 
We'll accelerate by one. We're still moving in the same direction, no changes, so we know we know just instinctively that this is going to be five because we're not changing direction and we're not pivoting, right? We're, well, yeah, we're not in a different direction, so we're not pivoting. Okay. So. He moves up here. And then, oh no, he doesn't actually. He moves an additional one. That's right, because we, we accelerated. Yeah, my fault. At, oh no. All right. Come on, Kevin, don't mess this up. What are you doing? There we go. Still have to go one more. We have to go one. Uh, 1. 1.2. Ah, ah. We'll do it. There. Oh God. Oh yeah, it's because of the snap. We're gonna. Do, we'll do it like this. That's fine. Like I said, it's it's a friendly game. Okay. Now we need to prep the next one, which is going to be five in this direction. Okay. Oh, crisis averted. Yeah, so we've got some defensive capability, I think, here. Yes, they're right on the line. Yeah, he'll be able to fire. He'll be able to use defensive fire here. Okay. And figure out weapons fire. Let's take a look at you. So you've got three shots. And F has one shot, right? The heavy auto F. Yep, one shot. And the Gauss cannon could fire now. Right? A, B. Can both of them hit? Can both of them fire? Okay. Actually, maybe not. Hang on. Oh, yeah. A, B. Yeah, right there. Right on the line. Right on the lot. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Morakiri is dead. Morakiri is straight up dead. Now, the reason I'm doing these X's is because this these Gauss cannons fire once, and then have to hold for two. One plus two. Now, these Gauss cannons aren't especially useful um, in combat, except for the fact that they are anti-armor weapons, which means that they destroy armor as when they hit. That's not meaningful, really, in a ship like this that uses matter weapons, because, of course, matter weapons bypass armor. But if it were firing against, if it were shooting against a ship that had specialized armor against matter, it would still be valuable. So really, the point of this destroyer is to go after ships that are uh, hardened against matter weapons. That's what they're. For. That's what this ship is for. It's to, for, intended to get up close, fire its Gauss cannons, take out the armor on the opponent opposing ship, and then get the hell out of there, right? Well, I mean, because it's it's technically, I mean, against the Morikiri, it's great, but it's a small ship. It's a little destroyer. It's not a. It's not a big dreadnought or anything. So it doesn't really have the longevity against bigger ships. But if you go over here and you see. Matter, if it's specialized against matter weapons, then armor acts at 50% capacity, but it still acts defensively. It still works. But if you use Gauss cannons to knock armor off, then it will reduce the total value every time it hits. So, we're going to use the Gauss cannons. It doesn't matter about it hitting armor. We're not going to worry about that uh, or care. I guess we will worry about it, but we, we're gonna, we'll show the calculations, but we won't care because it's bypassing the armor anyway. All right, so those are set. Now these guys, all of these, this guy here with all these weapons. So for two proton bolters on this side, that's all we got. So these proton bolters are both going to be defensive fire and they do uh, at will defensive fire. And for our purposes, the main distinction is that uh, at will defensive fire, you can have any number of weapons coming to bear on any given attack. 
uh, if they have at-will defensive fire. But anything with locked or emergency defensive fire, there's a limitation as the total amount of defensive fire you can bring. But it, it doesn't matter in this case because this is just these are all just the one type of weapon. So this is going to be at-will. Both of those are at-will defensive fire. And they're going to be, well, you know what? Actually, it's two each. So we do WW, WW. There we go. So they'll be able to defend against four shots or two shots, right? Because I could use each bolter against, I could use both bolters against one attack and then against one attack because they have a rate of fire of two. Or I can use each bolter twice on totally separate attacks. So we'll we'll see we'll see what this is what they want to do. All uh, right. So now we're going to declare. All right, we're declaring the attacks. So we learn the Morikiri over there learns that we're shooting one, two, three, four, five, six times. They don't know anything about the Gauss cannons. They know about these pulse autos. The pulse autos do 1d10, but have the potential for uh, doing a lot more damage. The heavy autocannons are straight up nasty at the beginning. Like, they start at 3d10. And there's one of those. So, the defender here, Morikiri, is definitely going to be defending against one of those. And because it doesn't know about the Gauss Cannon, which, honestly, is also dangerous, but it doesn't, they don't know that. Um... They're going to defend against one, two, three, and then one of these. They're going to use one defensive fire against each attack. Okay. Time to shoot. Go ahead and clear our matrix. So what's the silhouette we're using? I mean, I think it's pretty obviously going to be forward, right? Yeah. So, that is going to be... Right down, it's a two. Amplification is 12. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is... Oh, this, these poor guys. Okay, we'll start with Gauss Cannon 1. No accuracy. No accuracy bonus, I should say. Now, what's our range penalty? So, the range penalty on this one is minus one per click. You just have to get up close and personal. The distance here is 3.5, so that's going to be four inches. So, we get a minus four here. ECM. Countermeasures is 13. No evasives. And defensive fire, we determined it was going to be one shot. One de one defensive fire shot per shot, except for that last pulse auto. And we know that we've got a minus two. Do we have... Do we still have... Um, Reflection shield, I believe we do, right? Yeah, because it's right down the line. Yeah, so it's technically on either side. Either side will work. So we're going to do minus five for the shield. And let's get our total. 12, 14, 10, minus three. Minus 5, minus 10. Okay. That ECM is going to save his butt. We can't we can't get it. I mean, we're, we're going to max out at 18, minus 10 is going to be 8. So no shots. So that's Gauss 1. Gauss 2 is the same roll. I mean, it's the same type, tape, same DRM, so we're not going to, um, we're not going to get it because it's minus 10. Now, heavy auto. 
the heavy auto range is minus one per three, and we were at 3.5, so it's going to be minus two. But this is actually going to go down to minus eight. Oh, actually, no, no, because we've got accuracy to deal with as well. This has an accuracy of plus two. So that makes it minus six. So there is a chance. Oh, that's not the... Nah, I need to roll all three. Hang on. Let's do this again. Ten minus six is four. That's not going to work. Heavy auto is done. Now we've got the three pulse autos. Now two of those are going to have defensive fire on them. So we've got the same silhouette, silhouette amplification. Accuracy is the same. Range, I believe, is going to be the same as one, minus one per two. We're at, what, four inches, so it's minus two. ECM is the same, defensive fire is the same, and the shield is the same. So, in fact, we are at minus six here. No hit. No hit. And then finally, this last one has no DF, so it's only at a minus four. Ten. Ooh, that's a miss. Uh, that's a miss. Done. Okay. Well, that's the end of the turn. We haven't uh, done any damage this time around because this guy has gotten super turtle time. I mean, he is absolutely trying to escape. That's really all his, his goal is, is to escape. But when we come back, they are going to start crossing over. Now, uh, the way the way space is treated in the game, there's no real up option for ramming. Uh, I mean, ramming is a thing, but space is so big that you have to be within one click. You basically, have to be overlapping counters, and uh, you, you kind of have to make the decision to ram. This, and, and obviously, and, and in the, in the sense that because people move at different times. Even though they will kind of be crossing each other's paths, they're not going to hit. Uh, it only matters where they end up at the end of their movement step. So we're just going to see them pass. This guy is probably going to want to rotate, want to pivot to maintain flanking his his uh, starboard side. Cudgel is probably going to want to spin around so that it can face this guy and accelerate, chase him down. But uh, yeah, we'll leave that as a cliffhanger. Thanks for watching. See you next time.